Okay, so there's a few things going on when it comes to hop CDs. All of them having to do with timing and spacing. But here's the idea. When it comes to a hop CD, or even a full jump CD, the CD itself isn't the problem. The problem is, are you ready for an anti-air and do you know the multiple ways anti-air in this game? Movement is a big thing, okay? When we're talking about beating a hop CD, the first thing to remember is you don't have to challenge it and you don't have to beat it if you're not in the corner. Move your feet. Don't do this. Eh. Eh -eh. Run, block. Eh -eh. Eh -eh. Don't bulldog. Bulldogging is almost never good in KOF. You don't need to do it. You bulldog in Street Fighter because you don't want to give up any backwards distance, and you want to be close enough and you want to force some footsies on the opponent while be looking for anti-air. That's great. But if you do this in KOF, and the opponent hops and you block it, then it's completely invalidated. You have to anti-air your opponent for, like, to really make that strategy work. But first and foremost, you're rock, so don't forget. Light Rising Tackle is invincible. So if you're holding down and your opponent hops, don't forget, you could just beat it clean, okay? Spacing is important if we're thinking about not doing that. Obviously, this requires charge. And it needs to you need to be, like, looking for it and sort of anticipating. You need to be, like... Like, it takes time to do a charge special move. You can't just anti-air with that. If you're running at the opponent and you think the opponent's going to hop at you, then the answer is going to be different than if you were sitting still. So, here's the thing. First, we have to think about the range of Mature's Hop CD. Like, if, if Rock is standing here, do you think Hop CD is going to reach? Because it does. So this is about recognizing range. Like, if you're a Rock player, you probably know when the opponent is in your Fierce Punch range. It's about right here, you know that Fierce Punch works now. A oh, little, little bit further. Fierce. Hard kick will also work from this range, right? So, you know the range of your normals, right? But do you know the range of your jumping normals? Like, over here, Mature has only one poke that'll reach you, right? It's actually Standing Hard Punch. If you're standing right here, Standing Hard Punch is the only one that'll work. All the others are gonna miss, right? So you know the range of Mature's normals, but... She has an attack over here in range, and I'm not just talking about her specials. Her hop CD will reach over here too. So the first thing you need to recognize is at what ranges is an anti-air even feasible for me to think of. If Mature is over there, you don't have to worry about anti-airing a hop CD. It's when you're here that you have to worry about anti-airing a hop CD. Again, that's very tiny. Not here, here. But what you have to start thinking of is, are they in range to hop CD? Okay, let me think about an anti-air now. Okay, at this point, a jump might be coming. Let me beat it before it comes out. Or, let me meet it with my own aggression. Or, let me get out of range. You know what? I don't want to be here. I don't have to be here. This is King of Fighters. I'm just going to move. I'll be out of the way. Not there. Not there. And this time, I'm going in. You can be unpredictable with your movement, and that's a much better anti-air than anything else that I'm going to tell you in about a moment here. Now, the second thing would be... <clears throat> well, the third thing, I don't even know what thing we're on. There's no list here. There's multiple ways to beat the attack itself. First and foremost, you have something invincible, like in this case, like I showed you, that's perfectly fine. Second thing is to anti-air it. And anti-airing it is going to come down to hitting buttons that are about shoulder eye level. In Rock's case, he has a few of these. Standing jab and standing hard kick are some of the better ones. Standing CD can also catch because of it has its relative height. Now here's the thing, you're probably noticing... Look at, notice when I press the button here. I press the button before they're even coming down from the jump, okay? This is not on reaction. I'm not reacting to the hop. I'm thinking the hop might be coming, <clears throat> and I press the button before it gets there. 
okay? If you try to look for hops and then see, hey, there's the hop. Hey, there's the hop. Let me press my button. Oh, too late. You're too late. You might win. You might trade, depending on the situation. The reason I recorded the dummy to do two jabs is so we know exactly, exactly when it's coming. <clears throat> Since we know exactly when it's coming, we know which buttons can beat this if we anticipate the hop. If we don't anticipate the hop, and we hit our button late or don't hit it at all, then guess what? You didn't anti-air it. This is why movement is a preferred form of anti-air rather than a reactionary button. Reactionary buttons are risky because what if you react to a full jump rather than a hop? In fact, using the training mode options, we can set this up. Lot 2. <clears throat> Turn them both on. Oh shit. If you're looking for the hop, but then they full jump, then you're gonna mess it up. And you're, it's not gonna work because the full jump misses. It'll just beat those anti airs that don't work at that range. Let's try hard kick. Ooh, hard kick hits up there. There we go. Now here's the thing, if you have good reactions, a light rising tackle will win both times. But you need very good reactions for this, and you also, tellably, you need to be sitting here, waiting for the jump. <clears throat> if, if, you, if, you, if I'm mature, and I see you on the other side of the screen sitting there, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to backdash, and I'm going to throw a fireball. I don't have a reason to jump at a rock that's crouch blocking. I can set up my offense with this. There's no reason to jump at a rock who's crouching. So you need to be thinking as rock, I'm gonna run up, crouch, look for an ant here. Nope, didn't happen. Let me get out. Looking for the ant here. Nope, didn't happen. Let me do something else. Looking, looking, nope, didn't happen. Let me do something else. Looking for it. There it is. Looking for it. Hey! Looking for it. There it is. Hey! Looking, nope, out of there. Do you notice how fast I'm making these thoughts and decisions? This is all very important if you're gonna be thinking about ant here as a general strategy. So. This all seems kind of complicated, but this is all necessary because of KOF's speed. In Street Fighter, you don't have to worry about any of this crap. You just, I'm at the right range, they jump, I hit the button. I'm at the right range, they jump, I hit the button. That's it. That's all there is to it. In KOF, because of the run, you can mess up the jump distance. Because of the jump and the hop, you can mess up the angle. It's all about timing and spacing, every single aspect of this. So again, we're in the range where, it, where, a, where a hop CD is going to reach. We know which buttons might beat it. But there's a, quite a few ways you can anti-air. Number one is with a grounded button or a grounded special. Number two, don't forget about your hopping normals as anti-airs on their own. Irva, that's 100% true, but that's also why it's boring. It's slow, and it doesn't have much of a skill ceiling. This is what makes KOF more fulfilling than Street Fighter. In my opinion. Number one, if you have a jumping normal that is completely horizontal, no matter what, it's probably going to be your best air-to-air -air normal. If you play Rock, utilize Jump Light Kick a lot. I do this with King as, as well. If you think your opponent's going to jump at you, neutral hop or hop forward with Light Kick. If they're on the ground, hey great, you'll get some block pressure. Or you can just like jump light kick into like say fierce punch just to push them away. But again, this is the same as with a grounded normal. I'm anticipating the hop. I'm not waiting for the hop. Oh, there it is. Let me hop. Nope, too late. Waiting for it. I'm going to react. Oh, nope, too late. Can't react to that. It's not going to happen. So when you're at this range and you know you're at risk for a hop, take many defensive actions that will beat the hop. Force your opponent to beat your defensive options. Don't think, I need to do my hop CD now. Here's the other thing. If you both go in, one of you will win, simply due to timing and spacing. Like, 
Like, in this example here, Mature is winning, right? But it is incorrect to say that Mature has a 100% better hop CD. It's 100% incorrect, because there's multiple things you can do just with timing to change the result. You can start winning this by hitting your button as soon as you jump. Don't wait to get close, just hit the button right away. Notice that the Mature isn't actually hitting her button until about there. She isn't hitting her button until later in the jump. But because of that, if you hit your button first, you might beat them just with timing. That's number one. Number two is angle. What if you full jump? Mature's jumping CD hits down there. What if you neutral full jump rather than neutral hop? You'll just beat it due to angle. So, really, what you want to be asking yourself, if you keep getting hit with hop CDs, the answer is, why am I sitting here, at this time, right now? Why am I just sitting here, at this spacing, right now? Why? Why am I here? Why am I not closer? Why am I not higher? Why am I not out of there? If you're going to be at this range, have a purpose. Have a reason. Be here because you want to be. Be here because you're setting up your offense and you're hoping it's going to work. Or be here because you're looking for an anti-air. Be here specifically to egg the opponent on. Hey. Hey, girl. I'm here often. Yeah. Hanging out. Dancing off Super Arena. Yeah. But you want to jump, don't you? Yeah. No, I'm out of there. But you want to jump. But you want to jump. But you want to jump. Nah. But you want to jump. Hey, there it is. Hey. Hey, girl. <laughs> if you're going to be here, like when you're over here, you have a thought. Let me throw a fireball. When you're over here, you're like, let me toss out this random special. When you're over here, you're like, okay, I want to do my mix-ups. Okay, I want to do my mix-ups. So what's your plan when you're right here? Your plan should be, look for their jump and anti-air it, or get out of dodge, or jump in. You should be thinking about one of those things. So, Big Black, the question is, when you're here, how often are you looking for the opponent's jumps? How often are you saying, I bet he will jump in a moment, let me anti-air it now? That makes sense? Never forget, you can always move backwards. You are under no onus to chase the opponent, and your opponent is under no onus to chase you. If you want to move backwards to be safe, that's 100% fine. But keep in mind, if you keep doing this, over and over, there will come a point you cannot move backwards anymore, and ultimately, you're going to have to anti-air. You can anti-air here. Like, I wish I could just turn off the stage background. You can anti-air here. Or you can anti-air here. Either way, the anti-air is the same. The question is, did you actually do it? Were you thinking, my opponent might hop right now, let me be ready for it, and let me beat it? If, you, if you're not anticipating the hops, you're not going to beat them. Anticipate that they might hop, charge down for a moment to be ready to react. Anticipate they might hop and start hitting a lot of light punches. Anticipate that they'll hop and do a neutral hop or a retreating hop light kick. Think about the hop before it happens and say, if they're going to hop now, how would I beat that? Multiple ways. With rock, I'd say the most reliable is the standing light kick or just um, a neutral jump hard kick is also going to be good. Neutral hop hard kick works fine, by the way. It's not about the button you press. Really, it isn't. The buttons are all pretty much the same. Neutral hop hard punch will work too. In fact, that might reach about the same range as hard kick. Whoosh. Whoosh. Just do it. The button you press doesn't really have much bearing over whether or not you win. The question is, where's, where are you and what is the timing of the button? Like right there, I was going to do an air-to-air -air jumping light kick, but I didn't press it in time. Press the button earlier and it wins clean. Again, it's not the buttons. Just put a hitbox there. I don't care what button you press. Just put, press the button at the right time to win. Say, you can use your buttons to create a defensive zone to turn into offense. Yes, Pierre, 100% correct. Every character can do that. Welcome to KOF. 
You know who can do that also? Mature can do that. Can't get in. Can't get in. Can't get in. Can't get in. Oop. Can't get in. Oh. Everything I just told you also applies to mature. Everything I just told you also applies to Vice, to Iori, to Kyo, to King, etc, etc, etc. This is KOF. This is how you anti-air. By anticipating the hops and beating. Or if you if you're good enough with reaction to beat the hops like this, and they start to full jump, then that's perfectly fine too. And this is sort of getting to the next level of the mind game here. In the first recording I did, there's two jabs, and I hopped, and then on the way down, on the way down is when she would press the hop CD. You know, she'd do it later. So, let's try a slightly different recording. This is where Mature hits Hop CD as soon as she leaves the ground. Maybe you remember I told you a moment ago that, you know, if you want to win that air to air situation, you need to hit that button immediately. But now the Mature player is moving in and being aggressive with a very early button. If they're being aggressive, and you try to like stand jab anti air like this, you'll probably lose because her hitbox is already out and it's already active. She might get a lot of trades too. No matter what button you press, you gotta be really, really close and hit her right as soon as she leaves the ground. Otherwise, her hitbox is already out and you're gonna be trading or losing a lot. So how do you beat this? And the answer to this is actually pretty simple. The answer is, if they hit their button earlier, the active frames run out earlier as well. And if you crouch block, it misses. Can anyone tell me why this would be important? Kind of a quiz. I'm going to tell you the answer anyway, but why do you think this is useful? That's correct, Big Block. So, Big Black, exactly. That's correct. So, another way to anti-air, you have your grounded normals and specials, you have hop and jump normals, you also have crouch block if they are aggressive. Crouch block. And if you crouch block and they miss, you can punish the jump. So, there you go. If someone hops and hits their button late, you can beat it with all kinds of things, including moving away. If someone hops and hits their button early, you can beat it with an aggressive poke. Again, remember, this is jump CD as soon as po- wait, hold on. Yeah. So they're doing hop CD as soon as possible, right? You can beat that with your own aggression. You can beat that by making it miss and getting the punish. And you can also beat it by moving out of the way. And also by having a better angle. Depending on the button they press, you might have a good angle by jumping, full jumping. Yeah, that's 100% correct. Sometimes I'm telling you to respect my zone. Other times I'm invading your zone. The point is we both have zones we can protect. And special moves, obviously, get in the way of and muddle these zones, and that's what makes the game harder. Mature is probably not going to be just standing right here doing nothing. She's probably going to back up and throw a fireball. But when she's here, maybe you should move in. 
to keep her from backing up. But, you know, there's honestly multiple choices you could make. Defend this space aggressively, then maybe go in. People would roll or jump and I tried to punish. So Big Black, if someone jumps and you crouch B and you don't punish them and they land and throw you, then you were too slow. In fact, let me record the dummy with that right now. So I've recorded the dummy to do an early hop CD, and as soon as they land, hold back and hit hard punch. Don't forget about the defensive throw OS. Remember, if you're blocking like a jump in, you can just wait until they're hitting the ground and just hit the punch right there. As long as you hit back and punch right when they hit the ground, if they were to throw you, you'll just tech that throw. But it's better to punish the jump. So again, if you're trying to punish with your crouching light and you find out that they throw you or that they block, then your timing was off. It's a one frame window. It's pretty tough, but it's something you can practice. So again, BB20, <laughs> BGB, Mr. Backstreet. It's all stuff that you can practice and it's all stuff that applies to everyone. It applies to everyone. So your knowledge of this stuff will carry over to other characters. Well, Irva, remember, you're not reacting to any particular frame. You're just timing your button as they're coming down. The other thing, so yeah, you, you've made a mistake hitting the crouching B too low. The other thing is if you're crouching anyway, if you're crouching anyway, you might as well rising tackle. That's number one. Here's another thing. If you're further away... You're rock. You know this anti airs, right? The kick super or the climax are anti airs too. There are some things in KOF that are worth reacting to, mostly your own hit confirms, but there's a lot of things in neutral where reaction is not really the key. It's more about anticipation, good movement, and confusing, different, varied movement. Okay. Uh, yes, your kick supers are, well, level two. I don't think I've ever seen the level... T I don't think I've ever seen the kick super... I've seen the, the level 2 kick super, I think, trade once or twice. But it's honestly not something I've... I'd be worried about too much. If you're worried about it, spend another bar on Climax.
And you'd be surprised how easy it is to anti-air a hop when you know it's coming. You know, the interaction between the player is important too. You would be surprised, BB, BB20, how many players never, ever, 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 ever full jump and hop only. And those players are not that hard to anti-air. They're not. Because you don't have to worry about them full jumping over your jab, do they? If they never if they're never gonna gonna full jump, then why shouldn't you just stand here and mash jab? You know what I mean? Again, you can take options away from your opponent by playing well. The opponent then has to adapt by choosing other options. And if they can't, then you win. Or you would, assuming you are good at other aspects of the game. Let's say you're good at answering the mature and then the mature just starts turtling up. Do you know how to beat Crouch C Mash? 